Greetings, Glitter Gang. Happy Thursday. It's August 13th. We're still doing Christmas in July. I realize it's not July, but you know, what can you do? What can you do? Christmas in, in July just took longer than July. So how is everyone doing? Let's see, we got Donna and Barbara Jean, Gretchen, Lynn Marshall says, good evening from England. Good evening, Lynn. Sherry says, good morning. Good morning, Sherry. Catherine, how are you? Sherry, I'm glad you were able to be here live. Catherine says, hi, everyone. Deb says, good afternoon. Happy Glitter Day from Candy. Hello, happy Glitter Day. Priya, hi, how are you? All right, so, oh, Carol Joan. Yes, I am feeling better. I, uh, that was, ugh. you know, whatever. Um, Joe Davis says, hello. Kathleen, hi. Joyce, hello, all y'all. <laughs> Ellen, good afternoon. Scrap and Silly says, hello from Michigan. Hello to Michigan. Lori, howdy. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Um, yeah, last week I um, was having a problem. It happens enough that, you know, it's not like I was like, what's going on? This has never happened to me before. Um, but it's not, it's not something I'm dealing with like constantly 24 seven, but I do have a couple different kinds of arthritis. Um, I have one in my spine where um, I'm like grinding on some nerves or something and that's causing some neuropathy in both my legs, but my right leg is worse. I think I don't remember which leg is worse, but one leg was twice as bad as the other leg when I had the nerve test done. And then I also have a different kind of arthritis in my, my hip, which is like more of the inflammatory kind of arthritis. And every once in a while, this thing happens where um, I can feel like there's something wrong in between my lower back, my hip, and my thigh. Like the bones are not, they don't feel like they're connecting right. You know, like there's like, like my leg doesn't feel like it's in my socket right or something. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. And then what happens then is, or and I don't know which is the chicken and which is the egg, but then also all the muscles in my upper leg, so like the hip muscle, all of those little tiny muscles that are attaching, like so you can move your leg and your hips and all those, and then like the thigh muscles, they all like make a fist. So if you can just imagine making a fist and then not being able to unclench your fist for a couple days, um, what that would be like. Like when you start holding a fist, it's not a big deal. Like it's not the end of the world, but I mean, it gets old, <laughs> it gets old. Um, plus, you know, you might want to use your hand. So, um, so there's that. And then the longer that goes on, what'll start happening is my lower leg will start tingling and going numb. And then that has its own feelings of discomfort and feels bad. And so it's just like this cascade of problems, like where every single problem that I have has like a flare up all at the same time. Yes, I do have a um, EMS machine. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, like I wanna just, you just wanna walk to the bathroom, but when you go to put your weight on your leg, you know, your thigh muscles are not working, your hip muscles are not working. And so you have to kind of like figure out how to hobble. Like it's, it's just, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not the end of the world when it happens. It's not like anything like newly bad is happening to me, but it's just, it's just very, very horribly uncomfortable um, for, for a couple days, every once in a while. And then once it stops, everything is sore. All the, all those muscles are just so sore and I'm so exhausted, you know, again, because if you held a fist for two days, your hand would be sore when you let it go. Like it just, that's just, you know, that's just how it is. So that's what was going on with me. Doesn't that sound fun? 
Um, now my uh, sh now my uh, <laughs> now it's so it's so annoying because the nerves in my shin are like phantom hurting me right now, just like just like a reminder, you know. Like this happened to you. Remember what that felt like? It's like I can I can feel in my shin where they would be hurting and tingling. They're kind of like it. It's like a <laughs> like a phantom memory of pain. It's great. It's great. Oh, I never turned the lights on in here. What the heck? Oh man, talk about not knowing how to do a to do a show. All right, lights are on now. I mean the 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 these lights were on, but the room lights were not on. Okay. So where we left off is I had just shown you how to make um, uh, how to make if you wanted to make the pouch of the pouchalopa shaker, I had shown you how you can add a shaker after the fact. So you don't have to decide when you're making the pouch lopes if you want shakers or not. You can add shakers later if you want to. And I cut this out and put it in its own video just so if you want to go back and just review how to make shakers, you can. Okay, so um, that's the last thing. So did we finish all of these? I wish I remembered because if we did Well, maybe I'll look at the bottom. Look at the bottom and the top. So do we just need to make the box? Oh no, I said we were gonna embellish, right? Oh yeah, that's what, we, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. All right, now I remember. Now I remember. All right, so let's go look at our embellishments and sort of get those organized. Which I think I pulled them out and put them in their own little bag here. All right, so we've got strips, cards, little doodads, bows, okay car and more cards okay all right so what this is going to turn into maybe is a uh how i organize my embellishments or prep my embellishments sort of video so let's talk about that let's do some education all right i'm going to bring my big trimmer over just so that I'm not talking while cutting off camera. That would be less interesting. And then let's talk about that. So the first thing that I would do is I would um, make, I would cut all my, I'm gonna cut all my border strips. All right, so what I'm doing here is, do you see this flashlight? Um, because of where I put this flashlight, you can see it a little bit better maybe this way. I can see how, oh, here it is, you can see it. You can see how I can see the edge of the trimmer very clearly see where the edge of the trimmer is because the, the edge of the trimmer is blocking this light from showing up through. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of like cutting of strips, this is just a little pro tip to make it easier. Oops, I'm gonna move this to the other side. And that will, because paper isn't always straight. So, oh, my head is in the camera. Sorry for blocking with my face. So 
So, yeah, <laughs> Catherine says, I have the same rotor trim as you, and I've struggled with lining border strips up. So that's that's all you need to do, Catherine. Just get a LED flashlight and shine it so that you can see where the edge is. And, you know, you may need to experiment with where you need to put your flashlight to see it best. It depends on where your overhead lights are. All right, so then there's going to be one that's going to be too, well, maybe I can, it's going to be too hard to get this last one. So what I will do in those cases is I'll just cut it with scissors because I'm pretty comfortable cutting with scissors and if I ink the edges even if I get it not perfectly straight if you ink the edges it's not gonna make a difference and the reason I recommend an LED flashlight is because they're a little bit brighter and um, they're they just last a little bit longer because they don't use as much energy. I actually do want it on this side. This is the side that I would put it on normally, so I'm going to just put it back over there. I just had it too close, so the carriage hit it. But yeah, try this at home because it is going to give you, like, it makes it much more obvious where the edge of the trimmer is than just trying to line it up with your eyeballs. Okay, so let's see, what other announcements do I have? Oh, well the book club selection was made. And um, so we know what July book club is. So you can see how bright the flashlight is. We know what, not July, August book club's book is Aisha at last which was the one that was based on Pride and Prejudice. So the baseball people tried, but they were not able to persuade enough people to their team. So we are not reading The Art of Fielding, which is that Moby Dick baseball book. What trimmer do I use the most? The Rota trim, for sure. That's the one I use the most. I mostly only use the Fiskars trimmer for things that the Rota trim either can't do well. So like the five by seven pinwheel or cutting really small pieces off of small pieces. So like if you have a piece that's an inch and a half and you need to make it an inch, the Rota trim's not great for that. So, um, The rotor trim works very well on chipboard. Um, I've cut literally, and this is not an exaggeration, I do mean literally, um, thousands upon thousands of sheets on this thing over the years of chipboard. And it's work, it still works great. It's still on its first blade. I've had it since 2009, so, um, or 2008, fall 2008. I've had it since fall 2008. Every once in a while, if you're cutting a lot of chipboard at once, so like if you're making something that has a ton of pieces, 
then it'll start to feel dull and like you have to work harder. All you have to do if that happens is just stop cutting chipboard for a minute and just like run the blade back and forth empty for a while. It took, cause it's a self sharpening blade. And then that'll, that'll just, that'll stop the, if it starts to feel dull, that'll sharpen it right up. I remember when I ordered it and I got it directly from Rota Trim and I wanted to order a um, replacement blade at the time because I didn't want to like have it lose its blade and then I just didn't have a blade and the guy was like look we sell replacement blades but that's for like if it's in an accident you know you it, it's never going to run out you don't need one so please don't buy one and he was right you don't need one. Okay, let's keep going. The big Fiskars is terrible. The that pro the precision one with the rail, it, that one I hate. I hated. I returned it almost immediately after buying it. I bought it to see if it would be a budget alternative to the Rota Trim to recommend, and I hated it so much I returned it like the next day. And my recommendation is like just keep saving your money for the Rota Trim if it's an issue. Like it's better to just use an inexpensive Fiskars trimmer until you have the money saved for a rotor trim then to buy that big Fiskars trimmer. Cause it is, um, it has so many problems. That's one of them that it's really, um, so yeah, if you're, if you struggle with that one, this one is much, much better, much, much better. Um, it's more expensive. This one's about $225. Um, but like I said, it's totally worth it because it's the last trimmer you'll buy. Shaka says she's returned the that big Fiskars trimmer twice. Oh my gosh, that thing is like, I I just, you know, it's funny because Fiskars makes some things so well and then there's that thing and you're like, where's the, where's the disconnect? Like, why is it that this trimmer, which costs a fraction of what that trimmer costs, is better than that trimmer, you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a blade scientist, but it just seems like <laughs> there's some kind of issue going on with whoever was in charge of the big Fiskars trimmer. Although that video I have where I'm sharing the tips and trips tricks on how to use get the most out of your Fiskars trimmers has a lot of down uh, down votes. So I guess people maybe there are people who are like just intuitively better at using Fiskars products <laughs> than I am. <laughs> So maybe it's a me problem. Shaka, I did too because I got them during a Veterans Day sale. Um, so it was like super, it was like, you know, some discount stacked with the veteran discount. Like a, I had the coupon plus the veterans discount. And so I paid very little for that trimmer and I still returned it. That's how bad it was. <laughs>
I think Barbara Jean's making a joke because I said I'm not a trimmer scientist, but I play one on TV or use use one on TV. All right, so yeah, Fiskars makes fantastic scissors. They have great scissors. Um, they have a rotary cutter for quilting that back when we used to sell um, craft checks by the yard, we used and loved. It was like a ruler, a quilting ruler with a rotary trimmer blade attached to it. It was very convenient for things like cutting craft checks. Um, but, and, th but then they just have some products where it's like maybe a little more time at the drawing board. Yeah, I didn't even give it away. Normal, a lot of times if there's a product I don't love, I'd give it away as a joke. And then it also, I give it away with something that's good, you know? And no, that one just went back to the store. <laughs> that one just went back to the store. That didn't even become a joke prize. Like all the um, scoreboards. Yes, well, I think it's because, um, Shaga, the... The split on that Fiskars trimmer is in a really unfortunate spot because it's at six inches and then there's no measurements from like six inches to like six and a half inches or something like that. And if you're doing paper crafting, like if you're making cards or even if you're making photo mats, it's just a really unfortunate place to have the break. And so it's like they just, you know, that's what I mean when I say it's like they didn't really think it through because that's something that you know, someone like, I know we are memory keepers, you know, we have a, we have a, a on again, off again relationship with them, let's say, but I don't think that's a mistake that I see we are memory keepers making. And I think it's because, you know, if they were to design a trimmer like that, it would be specifically for paper crafting and they would take things like that into account. Whereas with Fiskars, they make a ton of stuff. They're, one, they're, they're like the number one blade maker in the world. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm sure the people on their like crafting division are thinking about crafts, but they're thinking about all crafts, I think. You know what I mean? So, all right, so now we're done with this because we've cut all the like big pieces. All right, so now that these are all cut out, I'm going to move this, and we're going to talk about how I deal with embellishments. Oops, I missed one. Oh, well. I know, maybe I'll just send Fiskars up my list of grievances. We can have an airing of the grievances. I saw a tool we are memory keepers was coming out with and I was like oh I should write this down because that's something I can make fun of on scrappy bowl but I don't remember what it was now but you know keep an eye out scrappy bowl six months away so start keeping an eye out for the annual roasting of we are memory keepers which incidentally to anyone who works for We Are Memory Keepers <laughs> and is watching this video, which is hopefully none of them, um, look, my top six most used crafting tools after my trimmer are all made by We Are Memory Keepers. So just relax. Just relax. It's fine. You get a lot of, oh, 
there may not be any football this year. What are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, we'll still have a party anyway. How's that? So we'll just, if there is no Scrappy Bowl, we'll just call it the Catherine Scraps Aversary or something. Okay? And we'll just call it that. And it'll be fine. It will be fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of each sheet and I'm gonna take the one that I haven't cut at all yet so that you can get an idea of how I, if I hadn't already started using these, how I would do it. And so this is something, um, this is what I do when I get a new collection and when I'm prepping to use it for a project. Okay, so let's talk about. this which is I just take tape <laughs> oh we could call it Corona Bowl <laughs> and the the beverage of the year because we won't we won't have teams to celebrate but we can just have Coronas although I don't like beer so oh well All right, so, but yeah, we'll do something even if there is no f uh, football. But speaking of sports ball, I watched some sports ball on Tuesday. I don't know how many of you follow hockey, but I caught the end of the Bolts game. Holy heck. Wow. That was something and when I say I caught the end of the game that game was six hours long because um, it had five overtimes so the the Tampa Bay Lightning and the who are they playing the Blue Jays right the Blue Jackets the Blue Jackets you're a Blue Jackets fan oh my gosh I felt so bad for the Blue Jackets because no one wants to lose a playoff game, but like after fighting so hard, I would have felt bad for whatever team lost because after fighting so hard for so many hours, I just can't imagine. I mean, they were so exhausted, all of them, even the refs were so exhausted. This is Miracle Tape. That's uh, what this adhesive is called. This is the two inch miracle tape. Okay, so now these are all stickers, basically. So all when I, we cut them out, they will be all ready to s stick down to the page. And so then what I would do is get your Tim Holtz scissors and now I'm gonna, I can never remember which it is so I have to, I have to test it, but there's one way to hold the scissors, and I think it's Tim is in, where it creates a serrated edge, and then if you flip them over, it, it creates a smooth edge. Yes, okay. All right, so if you're right-handed and that the blank side of the scissor is facing left, and Tim Holtz's name is facing right. These will not cut with a serrated edge. And then when you have Tim Holtz, when Tim is in, that's what it is. When Tim's in, you get the serration. If you cut Tim, when Tim is in, you get the serration. So you can flip these scissors over and have a smooth edge. So I, and that way you can use the nonstick, you cut through the tape, it's not gonna wreck them but you're gonna get a smooth edge. Your scissors won't be serrated as long as Tim's facing away from you, okay? 
So if you're left-handed, it's the opposite. You want Tim facing you, right? You want, well, no, you actually, you would want Tim away from you because you would, you would be cutting like this. Let me just, yeah, you would want Tim facing away from, away from you. Okay. So yeah, if Tim's, if Tim's in, that's how they're meant to be used to get the serration. So they cut through thicker things, but they are only serrated on one side. So if Tim's out, you get a smooth edge. So Tim's in, serrated, Tim's out, smooth. So then you can just use them like normal scissors. And then just cut out. I would cut out everything. I'm not going to cut out everything right now. I'm just going to tape everything and cut it out one at a time. But what I would do if I was preparing to do an album is I would cut them out and then I would punch all the holes so that they were just ready to go like they were stickers. And then you see on the back that they're stickers. All right. Okay, so let's, that's how I, that's how I prep embellishments, okay? Now with the strips, you can stick them down. You can stick, make the strips sticky ahead of time. However, I don't think that's necessary and the reason I don't think that's necessary is because this is not a hard shape to tape. So just these, and same with cards. So cards and, and border strips, I would just tape as I go. You know, that's not something that I'm too worried about. All right, so let's get our first envelope. All right, so that's here. So when I'm talking about like adding some embellishments, I'm thinking, Maybe we'll add embellishments to this flap, but mainly we're gonna add some embellishments to that flap. All right. So, you know, I guess it's really not necessary, but we can cuten it up. We can cutify it. Okay, so this one I think needs something red. Oh, I don't want stripes. Except maybe we'll do red and green. So that's one possibility right there. And then the other possibility is to just do this little strip. And then what we can do is maybe put something behind it. So I would just take a look at these and see if there's anything I want to go like right here. Wonder what about the Polar Express? Like maybe if it was on the thing. So let's do that. Let's do that. And I didn't tape all of these, so I need to tape these. I need to tape these other two. So let me just tape these first, and then we'll start sticking stuff down. So we'll put the We'll put the train. All right, so we tried to watch, Don watched the whole game. Oh my goodness. It's a, uh, it was intense. It was intense.
game two starts in 40 minutes. Well, I saw that they had to move it because of how long that other game went. Yeah, you can tape the embellishment page and cut with the scanning cut. You have to then tape the page to the scanning cut because it won't stick so well with this. So what you what you do is if you want to use the scanning cut, then you would take this and, and use washi tape on the edges to tape it to the scanning cut. Uh, sticky thing. Because the, because the tape backing is smooth, so it's not going to stick very well to the scanning cut. So just go around the edges with washi tape and tape it to the scanning cut mat, to the mat. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, to the thing, to the sticky thing. And that way it won't shift and get weird. How do you feel about the scanning cut? I hate it. I wish it was either better or worse because it's not, um, it's not like so bad that I can just like throw it in a dumpster and be, be like, um, you know, it's an abomination, a pox on your house. Um, but it's not good enough to recommend. So it exists in this weird space where, you know, sometimes I ask it to do something and it just does it. And I'm like, oh, wow, what a good machine you are. And then, you know, that happens like maybe 20% of the time. The rest of the time it's like, oh, let me fight you. But yeah, I, I even the, t the scanning cut, like I don't tape it before I put it in the scanning cut. So because the scanning cut has enough drama other other already. So um, yeah, I don't know what its problem is. Now, I have heard that you can, is it with the cameo and Barbara Jean can correct me, but I think it's the cameo you can like, print a registration mark on it, a piece of paper. You'd need a wide format printer for this, but you know, you can print a registration mark on a printer on a, on which, on, on embellishments and it'll scan it. And then you can put it in again. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, it's not user friendly. Let's just, let's just say that. I don't find it to be user friendly. Um, now, if you're better with machines, you might like it. Um, I've never really had a machine that I was like, oh, yeah, this is a really good machine. I'm glad I own it. So, for whatever that's worth. I am cutting out the Polar Express, but I'm going to do the outside first so I don't forget it. I just want to look at uh, 
I like the bow strip. I want to see if I want to put something kind of like in this space. And if I did, you know, what would I want to put there? I also like to know how many horizontal things I have. In this case, it's not many. I really only have two things that are horizontal to use. Okay. We've already used some of these. I'm gonna put the ones we already used at the back. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't, nothing is jumping out at me as is going to be great there. So I think we can just leave it. But this is enough of a little boost, I think, to make it look cute. Put it like right there. Yeah, it's cute. We would definitely want it low enough that it's going to fit here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mark over here where we need to cut. And then we'll just pop it in the Fiskars trimmer. Then we should just be able to tuck it underneath, which we will be able to. Okay, so let's do let's do the brown ink, gathered twigs. Nothing too intense, just a little bit on the edge, just to crisp up the edge and fix any cutting issues that I may have had, if I had any. And then I'm going to put a little bit of tape right on the edge. But yeah, so I'm not that necessarily the best authority on whether or not something works, but the scan and cut, I've never gone into a place where it just cuts everything out. Um, I've tried a ton of different things and it just, just didn't work. So I just don't use it. It's not even plugged in. And besides that, the only other electronic cutting machine I've used, I've, well, I've used the Sysix Eclipse, which I don't know if they make anymore or support anymore. 
and I gave to a school. And I've used um, the Cricut, but like way long ago, like 10 years ago. So, nice. Okay, all right, so now we'll do the inside. So we're gonna take this little thing there and then we're gonna cut out the train. I'm going to use my more detailed scissors, or my sh uh, sharp, sharpest scissors, I guess is what these are. They're not that detailed. Um, I'm cutting through adhesive. It's not ideal, but you just clean your blade if it starts to get gunked up. My blade's already pretty dirty, so... But yeah, if anyone ever invents a paper cutter that does what the Brother Scan and Cut claims to do, then I would love it. But like the whole promise of the Brother Scan and Cut was you just stick it in and it just does it. And that has yet to be my experience. I mean, maybe if you were doing like really super simple stuff, like, you know, bl stamp black single stamped images and things like that, where it's just really obvious what's on the, what's an image. And the problem is trying to do like embellishment sheets that are loaded up with images, but that's what I want it for. So I would pay good money for something that actually did what the scan and cut promised. Uh oh, don't don't get caught. How about a room and board <laughs> to be here, to be my scan and cut? If someone wants a job just like sitting around my spare room until I need stuff cut out. Huh, that's a funny, that's funny. That'd probably be really boring. You'd want it at least to come with Netflix.
could I come to Kona for a week to teach me your expertise? Oh, are you talking to Barbara Jean? Look, I'll say what I've said before and people ask me if I would help them organize their craft rooms. Yes, I will help you organize your craft room. I will charge you my normal rate for things, which is what? Chat. They should know in the chat what everything costs around these parts. And if you have pets, you have to also give me a hotel room. Yes, it is $5,000. Yes, that's what everything costs. Everything. It's non-negotiable. It's a take it or leave it situation. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what Barbara Jean's rate is. You'd have to ask her. But yeah, if you want me to come clean your craft room, whatever, that's that's all it is. It's it's simple. I'll do it. Someday someone's going to have like a craft room that's like three rooms of floor to ceiling like quarters level stuff and I'm going to be really sorry that I made this offer but Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't want to hear five thousand dollars would be a bargain to organize my thing. Don't if that if you think five thousand dollars is a bargain, please don't call me. Uh, miracle tape okay so miracle tape and score tape are the same type of tape in that they're both pressure sensitive tapes um, miracle tape costs a lot less than um, score tape and so when people say it's better I think what they typically mean is you know it's more bang for your buck because I've used Miracle Tape since probably around 2013, I want to say. And, um, you know, it's, wor it's been working for me great. But um, I will say that, um, you know, in all the side-by-side -side tests I've done between it and Miracle Tape, that um, the 8th-inch uh, Miracle Tape doesn't work as well as the 8th-inch score tape, which leads me to believe that Okay, that's cute, which leads me to believe that uh, Miracle Tape is not quite as strong as Score Tape, but it's not noticeable in any other size. So like quarter inch Miracle Tape works just as well as Score Tape for what we're doing, that sort of thing. I'm going to um, actually measure this one. <sighs> um, normally I don't, but... I don't want my train to look like it's going like up or downhill or something like that. So Hi Carol, welcome. Glad you're able to join us live. Put the train right there. How cute. It looks like it's going through the forest. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, it's a lot of fun, this collection. Okay, look at that. Going through the snowy forest. All right, so we've added a little bit of embellishments. We're not trying to go crazy here, but we just want it to be, you know, a little, a little extra, a little fun. 
Uh, so we've got one embellishment or one envelope embellished. Let's go on to the next envelope. All right, so we've got Santa here on the back. I think maybe something like this baby, it's cold outside. Like maybe that's what this music is. I mean, I'm, that's not what this music is, but we could maybe imply that that's what this music is. Although I don't like how that looks, so. This one may have enough going on just because it's got the town and the Santa saying shh. And then we have the music up here. I guess we don't have to necessarily do something on every single one. Probably because it's musical notes is why I'm... Sleigh Bell's Ring is also musical. Let's look at musical ones. Maybe just the words. What if we maybe just stuck the words up here like that's the name of the song? and Because it has washi tape on it. Joyer Noel is also a song. What I might do is I'm going to cut this out with the silver strip. So it's just this, like it's a band around the silver, and I'm going to cut away the green. Um, before I do that, I'm going to put tape on the back of it because then it'll be super skinny when I'm done. But yeah, Miracle Tape is um, it's just a lot cheaper. So you'll, you'll notice that the rolls cost about the same, but the Miracle Tape roll is like at least twice as long. So okay. All right, so let's. And then if we don't like this, then we can try just the words from the other one. but we'll be okay. All right. So now we have this that we could add as a band across. Just got to think about where we would add it. Like, can get in between. Now we could put it like here and we could just cut this off and move it. I don't know. I 
don't know. No, Kimberly. Oh, well, now this, I think, is the way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the end, and I'm going to ink it in the brown. Very carefully. Okay. And then we're going to stick this down right there. Okay, so that's going to go there. Then we're going to take this and finish it off like so. So that the band goes all the way across. Kimberly, oh no, so wait, wait, wait a second. You can probably fix it. What happened? You glued a shaker thing. Let's think, let's think if we can fix it. I'm just going to we'll troubleshoot the shaker. So I'm assuming that the shaker is already stuck to the cover and it's stuck to the cover without the stuff inside it. Is that the problem? And it's glued, is it glued down? And that's why you can't peel it back up with undo or something like that? Or is it like a hole in the cover and it's in the middle? Okay, used a sticky foam sheet and pressed it down really well. Okay, this is what I'm gonna suggest that you do. All right, here's my shaker, and I'm going to stick it down and burnish it really well. We're going to do on the spot. Now, is it constructed where I presume it's constructed? so that you have paper, tape, acetate, paper, right? Is that what you've got? Oh, it's a camera die that was supposed to have the shaker stuff in the middle and it's not attached to the cover yet. Okay. But basically you have something, you have the, as long as this is the same layers, as your thing. Yes. Okay. So you have your camera. So this is the camera's lens, I'm guessing. And you need to get stuff inside of it. And is it a die cut that you have? Like, could you cut it out again? Or is it something you cut out of a paper collection and you can't cut it out again? Because the answer is going to be different depending.
You can cut it out again. Okay. If you can cut it out again, then you can do this. Just cut the acetate out of it, out of the middle. Like that. Add just miracle tape on top of your pattern paper like this in the shape or glue, whichever. Add your little shaky pieces. Don't forget them. So pretend I did that. Put down a new sheet. of transparency once your shaky pieces are in. And then go around the outside this time and trim. Or even if you could trim it like halfway, that would probably be even better. So it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Doesn't matter if you cut into the foam, it doesn't matter. Once you've got your acetate cut and scored, then you can just put your new die cut on top and you'll be all set. Okay. All right, now let's get the inside of this one done. Oh, we have music again. Blurred. And then it's a Franken shaker. Then it is a Franken shaker. Let's see, now, Let's look at those. Let's see what else we can maybe mix in. Want something red like this Merry Christmas. OK. 
Okay. And let's see what else. Let's. Throw in a little candy cane. Okay. All right, so we're going to just Okay. So these we're going to cut into right. so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna um, see how I have this corner on this line I'm gonna twist it so that the top corner is a quarter inch no I'm gonna twist it so that they're that's, uh, there's one on one and a quarter and one corner on one inch. So we've got what, the bottom corner on one inch, the top corner on one and a quarter inches. And on the other one, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do the other way so that oof, they will go like so, okay? And then we have to do the same thing with this one. We're gonna cut off the rocking horse. And then let's cut out our little candy cane, which I don't know if we need the candy cane, but won't, it won't hurt. Ah, Holly. Holly is a little, always a little tedious to cut out.
going to switch to a smaller pair of scissors when I'm on the inside here. I'm going to get it all the way through cutting it out and then I'm not going to like it. All right. I see that coming a mile away. Did the cats give me a good massage when I was hurting? Well, I mean, kitty, uh, tiny cat doesn't care about anyone other than tiny cat. However, kitty, when she can tell people don't feel well, she hangs out with them and tries to make them feel better. So, you know, she lays next to them if they're sick, um, that sort of thing. So Kitty's, Kitty's the nurse kitty, you know. Like um, in February when Mr. Lifeguard and I were so sick, um, Kitty, she hung out with us as much as she could. She, um... But, you know, Kitty also gets scared if you sneeze too much, so sometimes, or cough too much or something like that. So you can, you can it, it, test Kitty's patience, let's just say. Eh, I'm going to leave the thing. All right, I'm going to use red ink on these because I think we need a little bit more color. So this is festive berries. So when I have something like this where I have so many pieces, actually maybe I'll just do those three. That looks better, I think. All right, I'm gonna just do the, these three. So, we're going to stick these down. The red was just a little too intense, I think. You don't have to make this complicated. I mean, you know, make it as complicated as you want because it's your book. But what I'm saying is you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, you know, because you're already showcasing um, the papers, and if you've added the shakers to the front, you know, you you don't have to go crazy. But you can also go crazy if you want to go crazy. Go nuts! Make it as embellished as you want. Just remember you have to close it. That's the only thing to keep in mind. Is that you've got to be able to close it.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this, this one kind of where I want it. And I'm just going to slide this one in. All right, there we go. Then Then peel our little guy here. All right. We did it. Second one down. Ten to go. <laughs> Ten to go. All right. Maybe this one is one where we can use some of the something gold. No. No. Okay. The, we can, this is not one where we're going to use something gold. Nope. Nope. You want to use like a candy cane stripe? Um. All right, I think these are what we need. Nope. All right, I'm gonna ink this with the brown. Then
All right. So we'll put this one down on the outside. I'm starting to get nervous that we're gonna run out of strips, but worst case scenario, I'll just print more. So whatever, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine if we run out of strips. Okay, this is three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna stick it three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. All right, now onto the inside. I think we can use this one. Yes, perfect. And maybe, nah, it's a little too tall. Let's see if there's anything in the embellishment sheets. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, this one I cut out before I did so I'll just put some strips of tape on it before I cut it out again. Yes, we do have candy canes on this one already, but I'm fine with them repeating because they're the exact same candy cane. So it's tying the top to the bottom. And it, because the top is so busy, it actually helps calm it down a little bit. Okay. Oh, and um, next month we're going to read a book with a, well, you actually have a choice for September. My librarians um, put out a recommendation for books with sunglasses on the covers which when I saw that, I was like, I see everyone's phoning it in now with book clubs and book recommendations. <laughs> um, but I did pick three books with sunglasses on the covers. If you want to do that for September from their list, and I did not pick Where'd You Go Bernadette because I did not like that movie. <laughs> so... Um, even though Where You Go Bernadette was on there twice for some reason, on their list twice. So you can do, we can do sunglasses, but we also had a request to do books with a cat on the cover. And I also have three of those. 
so we can go either way. I will say the books with the cats on the cover are more serious than the books with sunglasses on the covers. Um, and a couple of them are classics. Like I have The Masketer and Margarita on there. And a modern Jap modern so think about it think about it we can do both and we'll just do cats in October and we'll just rename our book club judging books by their covers Pete the cat and his magic sunglasses. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is get this stuck down. Let me get. Oh, Pete the cat is a real book. I don't think that was one of them. Um, it was like some undercover bromance book club or something was one of them. So one of them was a, at least one of them was a romance. And one of them was a mystery thriller maybe. The sunglasses ones were all over the place. Thanks Joanne. You finished the art of fielding. Did you like the art of fielding? It's supposed to be good. Bye, Gigi. Um, I actually might read the art of fielding. We'll see. What I'm working on now is I made a list of every book I bought in 2020 so far and I'm like spent actual money on and my goal is to read all of those before the end of the year and then in 2021 I'll work on 2019 and just work my way back year by year okay But yeah, I made a list of all the money I spent on books. And the most expensive book I bought this year was um, Unraveling Oliver. Because that was before the number one requirement for book club to be included in book club it was you had to be available at my library. And Unraveling Oliver was the book that taught me to consider that when I was picking book club books. So the, so after the month that we read Unraveling Oliver, which really, of all the books to spend money on, ugh, that one, ugh. but um, anyways, <laughs> whatever, I own it now, thanks. <laughs> um, thanks, book club. Whose idea was this? Oh, wait. Okay, I'm going to go over these leaves with my silver pen.
to try and lighten it up because this black is just really intense. And we tr watched a couple episodes last night of The English Game, which is a series on Netflix that's about soccer and how professional soccer got started. Of course, it's called football in the series because it's British, but it's about soccer. Um, Football as in soccer, not football as in NFL. Um, there's a lot going on in this series. I don't think it needed as many plots as it has. It could have been, you know, like three really good episodes instead of six episodes wandering all over the place. And then I watched... Um, the Handmaiden, which is Park Chan Wook's adaptation of Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. And if you have read Fingersmith by Sarah Waters and you made it through that book and the content wasn't too much for you, then you should really watch this movie <laughs> because uh, it's one of the best adaptations of any book ever that's ever been made in the history of movies adapting books. I have to clean my scissors. They're getting a little messed up. And if you haven't read Fingersmith and so you don't know about the content, um, just there's a content warning <laughs> for uh, Let's see, abuse. For sure. Child abuse, that that kind of stuff. But it's it's not um a happy story really but like I said so I'm mostly recommending the movie to people who have read the book and enjoyed the well and appreciated the book let's say and uh, Park Chan-wook is um, the director of Old Boy so if you're familiar with his content and you like his content this is not anything beyond what he's already done or more extreme than what he's already done. But it's, it's like I said, it's one of the best adaptations that's ever been made of a book. Um, he moves it from Victorian London to colonial Korea when it was being colonized by the Japanese or invade was under Japanese occupation in the 1930s before World War II. It's a great setting. But it's definitely not a family film. So. And he's an ex can be extreme as a filmmaker in terms of pushing boundaries. Um, but he's not doing it typically, he's not doing it just to, just to do it. So he, he does have reasons. Um, it's just, you know.
what your threshold is. So maybe just look into some of what's going on before you watch it. If you're intrigued. Okay. Let's see. Let's go now to the next one. We have time to do one more. All right. So we've got... Nope. Ugh. <laughs> this is a nitpick and I do like this collection, but I would like it better if all of the peppermint stripes were kind of facing the same direction on the same angle. <laughs> These ones match up. Candy read Dark Matter last week and she thought it was really interesting. Good. I would hate if you'd read it and you thought it was completely uninteresting. I mean, I suppose not every single one has to have a thing on it, but What do I want to do? All right, I'm going to try cutting these letters up and see if I like them. Um, I do think Dark Matter is really interesting. Uh, like, you know, if I'm going to read a book about physics, that's the kind of book about physics I want to read. Because I also read Randomized by Andy Weir, which is, I thought was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, which is also a story about physics, um, or quantum physics specifically. But it's was so bad and like when I got to the end of it I was like so the Martian is popular hopefully it's better than this <laughs> So what I'm going to do is cut these so that they're just white strips. And we'll 
do half inch white strips. So if you've read The Martian, let me know what you thought because Randomize was either not his best work or it's not for me. <laughs> or maybe Andy Weir is not for me if it's ex indicative of his work. But yeah, yeah, it was about... Um, someone invents like a pocket quantum computer and it's set in Vegas and it's all about like what cheaters would do with a quantum computer and how the casinos would deal with it but it's like everything about it is just, <laughs> just so stupid <laughs> so I, I mean there's no other way to describe it like the crimp some of the criminals plans you're just like what the hell is this plan this is so stupid like this you're gonna get it's it is obvious to me as someone who doesn't work in casino com, uh casino security or quantum computing that this is a terrible plan um and that you will immediately be caught and you're, I'm being told by the author that you're one of the smartest people who's ever lived. And I just find that incredibly hard to believe. <laughs> so. <sighs> I'm so regretting cutting this up into strips. This is one of those things that you're like, this better work. I better like this because it took me so long to do it. Okay, we got there. We did it. Now, That's actually pretty cute. So it paid off, it paid off. All right, I'm gonna use festive berries on these.
Although maybe Andy Weir was making a commentary on the type of people smart enough to be able to use a quantum computer to rob a casino or maybe not like, let's say, practical or good at crime. Like it's a different skill set, but I mean, I am also neither a master thief nor a quantum computer and I could see that the plan was doomed so, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how out of touch these scientists were. So the trick with this is to not necessarily try to get it like super perfect. Um, it's okay if they're kind of crooked, but don't try to make it crooked. So like they're going to be more crooked. They're going to look more random if you don't try to make them crooked than if you try to make them crooked. Cause so like see how this looks not as good as this where I'm trying to make them straight but they just aren't straight. Okay, so we've got the best of all gifts around any Christmas tree, the presents of a happy family all wrapped up in each other. All right, here we've got postage. So maybe it's time to use the Reindeer Express or hmm. actually going to use this because then we have stars on the bottom and stars on the top but they're not the same exactly so we're getting more variety of color and we also have the little merry and bright merry and bright All right, and stick that there. And then I think I want to give it like a little green border. So I'm going to cut some strips off of these strips, just like an eighth of an inch. Okay. Well, I have enough room to cut a quarter of an inch. So maybe I'll cut a quarter of an inch. All right. 
So there's one. Here's the other. So now we have these little strips and I'm going to I'm still broadcasting on my PC. Like I still see myself, so I don't know what's All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to I just want like an eighth of an inch showing, oops, Ugh. okay, all right. Um, well, for in terms of recordings, just so you guys know that um, I don't use the recording YouTube makes. I make a local recording now. So I'm always, even if I am not online, I would still be recording. So it's, um, one thing you don't have to worry about is that a recording would be lost. Because the only way I would not have a recording of a show would be if my computer crashed and so I didn't have a local recording but then um, also whatever server YouTube makes their recording on also didn't make a recording for some reason so if that is what's going, if, if those circumstances were to both happen, my guess would be we would not need to be worrying about that episode because it was probably the last one. <laughs> so. Yes, exactly, Donna. I just want to let you know that this is, it's a whole different setup from the bad old days um, when it was easy to lose a recording. Now it would be incredibly, incredibly difficult to lose a recording. I mean, we're, I'm, we're talking like the world is possibly no longer the same <laughs> level of, of catastrophe. Okay, so there we go. Very cute, very cute, very cute. All right, so we got three pockets done. No, we got four pockets done. 
there's one drying off to the side. So we're a third of the way through, right? So we'll be back tonight. Maybe we can finish it if we're very, very good. If we're very good, maybe we can finish decorating all our pockets and then next week we'll do the box. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful evening. Those of you who are overseas and are headed off to enjoy the rest of your evening or go to bed, have a wonderful weekend as well. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, Joyce. That's why I make a local recording. When I say local recording, I mean, I make a recording at the same time that I'm broadcasting. I'm making a recording on my computer. And then YouTube is making a recording on their server. Um, but I don't use that one because the quality of the one that I make locally is better. Um, so I only use the YouTube one in emergencies when mine messes up. And mine does mess up sometimes. But um, normally it's not a problem. So no worries. No worries. All right. Thanks so much for watching. And I will be back tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time, which is five hours from now. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next week. And soon, soon it will no longer be Christmas in July. Um, or I guess it's Christmas in August now. And then we'll be back to finishing the school album which is now relevant again. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.